Well, good morning and welcome to Church Online. We're so glad that you've decided to join us today. Whether you're part of the Agape family, whether you are a first time viewer, even a second time viewer, we're glad you're here. We just want to invite you to worship the Lord with us today. We're going to start by singing The Lord Reigns. Today we invite you in to this service, Lord. We invite you into our homes today, Lord, and we just want you to be king over our homes, over our families, in our lives, Lord, and, and on this island, Lord. We want to see you lifted high, and we want to see you on your throne in heaven. Hallelujah. You are beautiful. You are awesome, Lord. King of kings and Lord of lords, we love you and we worship you today. Hallelujah.
you're overwhelming, Lord. I see the work of your hands, galaxy spinning a heavenly dance. Oh God, all that you are is so
all that you are, God, is so overwhelming, Lord. You are beautiful. You are wonderful. You are glorious. All of these things and more, Lord. There are no words to describe just how awesome you are, oh God. There are no words to describe your majesty, your splendor, oh God. You are sovereign. You are mighty. You are powerful, Lord. Oh God, and you are beautiful. You are so beautiful, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence here with us today. It is so overwhelming and we are so thankful that you are with us.
Christ my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Jesus, we thank you today. We thank you for your omnipotence. We thank you for your sovereignty, O oh God. We thank you that we can worship the one true King, Lord. Jesus, you are beautiful. You are wonderful. You are powerful. And as we've been singing in all of these songs today, Lord, we just, we just want to lift you up. We want to acknowledge all of these qualities that you have, Lord. There's no words to describe you. You are incomparable. You are indescribable, O oh God. But Lord, if we could just touch the hem of your garment today, Lord, if we could just get a glimpse of you, Lord, if we could just get a little taste of heaven, just a little glimpse of heaven today, oh God, we want to press in so that we can just get a little a morsel of you, oh God, just a little bit of you, Lord, will we'll change our lives, Father. That's just how powerful you are. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for the victory that we have in Jesus. And we thank you for what you're going to do in this service. It's in Jesus' precious name we ask these things. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You alone are worthy. There is none like you, Lord. And we magnify and honor you today. We want to glorify you, God, for your goodness, for your mercy, for your love that is being poured out in our lives. Lord, we thank you. We praise you today. For this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And so, Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you for your blessings on our lives. Thank you for your love that you have poured out over us on your children, on your creation. We thank you and we love you for all that you've done. But we thank you and we love you for all that you are, for who you are. In Jesus' name today, we want to give you all the glory, honor, and praise do your name amen amen well welcome to church online it is great to be here with you today i pray that you would be uh, blessed today that you would sense and feel and know the spirit the power the presence of god in your life i thank god for you and for this opportunity to speak into your life today and uh, we're going to be looking at the message here in just a second but before we get into the message today, uh, we've got a, a, a few special things that we're going to be talking about and doing today. Uh, this is actually quite a special service that you have tuned into and joined us for today. And uh, today we are celebrating Child Month. May is Child Month. And, uh, and we've had the privilege and the honor of celebrating this every year for many, many years. And, uh, and so we as a church, we as Agape, have partnered with the Department of Children and Family Services to host the service for Child Month here in Grand Cayman. So that's what uh, this service is focusing on today is our children and, uh, and just the opportunity and the blessing that they are, the opportunity to, to honor them today. We, we honored moms last week. We're honoring children today. I feel like it's very appropriate to uh, be able to do so. And so I just want to say, first of all, a big thank you and shout out to our government and Department of Children and Family Services uh, for this opportunity today to be able to host a service uh, for Child Month. And so we thank God for that privilege and that opportunity today. And, uh, and so uh, before we, we get into all the, the things that we have going on here today, first of all, I just want to encourage you, if you would like prayer, we would be happy to pray with you today. You can uh, email us at agape at C-A-N-D-W dot K-Y. You can call us at 949-2539 once service is over today. And, uh, and you can also uh, contact us through our website at agapekman.ky. 
and you can go to the contact us section there and send us an email and we'd be happy to uh, get in touch with you and we would love to pray with you today and uh, and I just thank God for each and every one of you and for this opportunity that we have to speak into your life with the Word of God now as we continue to say every week, we do have giving opportunities available. Uh, as, as we keep reminding everyone, we recognize the difficult financial times that we are living in, uh, but we want to continue to sow into the kingdom of God, into the work of God, the work of the ministry. And, uh, and thank you to all who have given and continue to support us. Uh, we couldn't do what we do without uh, the, the financial support that has been given. And so we just want to thank each and every one of you for the giving that you have uh, sown into this ministry, the seed that you have sown into this ministry. And God bless each and every one of you. If you would like to give, uh, we have a few ways that you can give. Uh, and you can email us at agape at cndw.ky to find out about those. Uh, but just to brief you very quickly, we do have online giving available through your banking uh, institution. And you can actually give through your banking institution, do a local transfer of funds locally uh, to uh, our, our bank if that is what you would like to do. We also have uh, card services available that if you would like to uh, pay your tithes over the phone, uh, we have card services available that we can do that transaction over the phone if that's something that you are interested in. And so if that's something that you're interested in, you can give us a call, 949-2539, email us at agape at cndw.ky. And we'd be happy to just talk through that with you today. So God bless you. And uh, we look forward to, to uh, the continuation of the ministry that God has for us as a church during this time of COVID-19. At this time, we're going to have a message from the Department of Children and Family Services. And so let's check that out now. On behalf of the Department of Children and Family Services and the Ministry of Community Affairs, greetings and happy Child Month. Since 1997, May has been observed by the Department of Children and Family Services as a special time to celebrate our children. Despite our current reality of coping with COVID-19, such an important celebration and acknowledgement of you, our children, was not to be deferred until next year. The department and partner agencies have created a number of activities for children and families to participate in while complying with the shelter in place regulations to keep everyone safe. Please visit our Facebook page, other social media platforms, and Radio KMAG to see and hear all that is planned. This year's theme is Our Children, Today's Creation tomorrow's masterpiece. Children are God's masterful creations gifted to us. Just like a collector of artistic masterpieces, God requires us to skillfully care for our treasures. He has provided us a confirmed parenting manual, and the following text certainly speaks to such. Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 29, 17. Correct your son and daughter, and they will give you comfort and delight your soul. Timothy 5, 8. But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he is denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Proverbs 13, 24. Parents who choose to care for and discipline their children truly love them and are following the Lord's command. Our behaviors and attitudes influence the type of adults our children will become. Our homes and communities must be places where our children know they are safe, expressions of love normal, acceptance and an unbending endorsement of their worth never questioned. As a nation, we must foster an environment that protects our children, upholds their rights to family, and supports their ability to access equal standards of education and health care, all without fear of discrimination. These actions are vital to help develop productive, compassionate, 
loving, empowered future adults and promote a prosperous future and a better world for our children. To our children, you are precious gifts from God. You are talented and unique. God has a plan for your life. You are today's Davids, Samuels, Sauls, Marys, Ruths, and Abigails, all created to become living masterpieces. These biblical youth, no doubt, saw themselves as just another child, but our creator had a masterful plan for each of them. It is the same for you. God has an awesome blueprint just for you. You are special, resilient, and definitely destined for greatness. You are a masterpiece. In closing, allow me to share a quote from former Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Kofi Annan. To look into some aspects of the future, we do not need supercomputers for projections. Much of the next millennium can be seen in how we care for our children today. Tomorrow's world may be influenced by science and technology, but more than anything, it is already taken shape in the bodies and minds of our children. I thank you and have a blessed day. One of the great privileges and honors that we have today is is to actually hear from our children. And so uh, while COVID-19 has made this uh, quite a little bit more difficult than usual to be able to do, I thank God that we still have the privilege and opportunity to be able to hear from our kids today. And so we actually have several presentations for you today and we, we want you to stick around and, and listen to each of those uh, presentations today. And so would you turn your attention to our screen if you're not paying attention to the screen right now? Pay attention because our kids are coming onto the screen at this point in time and, uh, and we want you to, to see and hear from them as we celebrate uh, Child Month. And so at this time coming onto the screen, we will have Kaylin and Kyle Wood. Hi everybody, I hope you're being safe out there. Today I'm going to be reading Psalm 23 to you. I hope you enjoy. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me into paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For though are with me, thy rod and thy staff, they come from me. Though prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anoints my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Happy Children's Day. At this time, we're going to have a number from Joshua, who is a part of our church. Good morning, church. I'll be playing a song for you. It's called Every Praise. Hope you enjoy.
Hope you enjoyed it. And we've got one more presentation from our children today. And this one is a song from Mariah Padua. I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know Our kids did such a phenomenal job with those presentations and I just want to thank each of them for uh, the presentation that they made here today and so I hope you enjoyed those God bless you and uh, we we know that uh, as we said that COVID-19 has sort of made uh, all these different dynamics more difficult on our lives but I thank God that we still have the capability the technology uh, and the ability to be able to uh, do things like this and so uh, I just want to say a big shout out to our kids and uh, thank you so much for what each of you have done and uh, let's continue to lift up our children in prayer during this time. This time has been difficult for many of our children as many of them don't even understand what some of, uh, some of what has been happening. But not just that, our children are social by nature and the fact that our children have not been able to gather together with their friends and gather together during this time with with. Uh, and just just play like they normally do and, and just do the things that they love to do and just be kids uh, has been it just it's, it's been challenging for them and so we want to continue to lift up our children in prayer during this time and uh, and so uh, would you just pray with me for a moment as we we pray for our kids as a matter of fact if your kids are sitting next to you if you have children with you uh, would you just lay hands on your kids I know for some of you that might be strange but that's okay uh, would you just join in with us as we as we just 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 hug them just just grab them lay your hands on them and let's pray for our kids today God I thank you for our children I thank you that they are a blessing and that they have been given to us by you. We lift each child up before you today, God, and we just ask for you to pour out a special touch on each and every child. 
We ask, Lord, that, that they would be blessed, Father God, abundantly. That, Lord, that they would know and sense and feel your presence. I pray, Father God, for you to comfort each child during this time. We know, Father God, that there's a lot happening in our world. And, and Lord, our children are, are suffering right along with us. Many of them don't understand. And even for the ones who do, many are scared and frightened about what all this could mean. But, Lord, I thank you that you are the source of all comfort. So would you comfort our kids today with your presence with your love and with your power i pray father god that our children this would not affect them that the lord that they develop mentally our children would continue to to grow and grow blossom and bloom that father that this would even be a, a source of advancement for them father god and that lord our, our kids would not be held back by the things happening during this time of covid 19 but that father god instead they would advance by leaps and bounce lord i declare them blessed today by the power of jesus christ through the ministry of the holy spirit and i thank you father god for their lives and i declare them blessed now in jesus name amen amen thank you so much for joining with me and praying with uh, with me for your kids but uh let's keep praying for our kids you know uh, so often our children uh, get set off to the sidelines but let us continue to pray and lift up our children before the Lord and ask for his hand of mercy and grace to be on them today. Well, let's dive into today's message. As it's Child Month, we have the privilege and the opportunity to celebrate our children. Children are a wonderful gift from God. And I just thank God that we have the privilege to be able to uh, just, just talk about the blessing that they are. You know, when we look at scripture, scripture gives us all these lessons for life. It's not just about, you know, uh, salvation, though it is. That's the main narrative of scripture. But in that, there's all kinds of things that God says is important to him. All kinds of things that God says is important to life. And raising family is one of those things. Raising our children is vital and important. The Bible tells us that if we do not care for our own, that we are worse than an unbeliever. That's how serious God takes family. That's how serious God takes children. And, and sometimes, and, and while I don't think there's many people who would say this, the way that we oftentimes live is almost as if parents are more important than children, but, but I don't believe that at all. Our children are vital and they are important. They are important parts of the family unit, of life, of our society. And we should honor, we should bless, we should cherish our children. You know, I want you to do something with me before we, we dive too much further into to the message today. Would you, would you close your eyes with me for a second? Uh, I'm gonna close my eyes with you, but would you close your eyes with me and just imagine for a moment, you're standing on Seven Mile Beach. You got it pictured yet? You're standing on Seven Mile Beach. You've got your toes in the sand. The water is coming up on the shore. It's, it's late afternoon into the evening. The sun is going down and it's setting. Think of that beautiful sunset off in the distance as you stand on one of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Imagine the colors. Imagine what the sky, the clouds look like. It's this beautiful image, isn't it? You can open your eyes now. You, you, you're able to just imagine this beautiful image. We got some great news this week, you know, where, where our government's talking about being able to open back up beaches and all this kind of stuff. It's like incredible, right? So this is a great time to start talking about the beach again. <laughs> but, you know, one of the most amazing and incredible things to me is, is how God is able to paint these beautiful masterpieces. I mean, we... Who isn't just awed by the beauty of a sunset? I mean, it's just incredible to be able to just, just say that, that we get to view and see this million dollar view. I mean, to be honest with you, I think it's worth more than that. But, but for some people, they literally pay millions of dollars for the view because of they, they live on Seven Mile Beach, right? But I mean, here we've got this incredible view that God has painted for your pleasure, for you to view, for you to see, for you and I to look at and see his amazing grace and splendor and majesty. Now, I want us to, to look at a scripture that talks about this here for a second. Psalm 19 verse 1, it says, The heavens declare the glory of God 
and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Now, isn't this incredible? That, that it tells us that, that the heavens declare the glory of God. That, that, that when we look at the sky, that we should be able to see it proclaiming the work of God's hands. And, and it's this beautiful masterpiece that God is painting, that he's weaving together, that he's put together for you and I to be able to see. And so when we talk about Psalm 19 verse 1 and we, and we talk about this, what we're really talking about is God is able to create these beautiful, majestic wonderful things you know even with the beauty of a sunset one of the most incredible and amazing things is that that's not the only masterpiece God ever made God made many masterpieces but I think the one that God is most proud of is you and me and though sometimes you and I don't feel like a masterpiece God has made us at the pinnacle of creation he makes everything but creation was not completed until God made Adam and Eve and put them in the garden they were the pinnacle of all that God made and they were special because they were the only thing in all creation that was made in the image and likeness of God you and I regardless of whether we are children teenagers, young adults, adults, or, or in our old age and seniors, regardless of what age we might be, we are all made in the image and likeness of God. Whether we believe in God or not, we are made in his image and likeness. And here's the incredible thing to me, is that it doesn't matter whether you are standing on Seven Mile Beach looking at the sunset, or you're admiring the Alps, or you're some other beautiful creation of God. God made you and I. The entire universe is a masterpiece of God's design. And it's one of the reasons why we're just so awed by it is because when we look at the creation, when we look at the things God makes, we can't help but be awed by the splendor and the beauty and the wonder of the things he's created. That's why we study it. That's why we study the universe because we're we're awed by its vastness, by its beauty, by by its mysteries. And this is what's happening is that you and I as a part of that's one of the reasons we study the human body. It's not just so that we could know more about ourselves, but it's because we are awed by the splendor of the human being. And none of this compares to the beauty that we find in God through Jesus Christ. None of it. But yet, God looks at us and he says, I've made you beautiful. I've made you, you incredible. I've made you a masterpiece. We are God's great masterpieces. The theme for Child's Month this month is, is actually quite amazing. Actually, I think it's, I think it's incredible. And uh, I, I want to show you what the theme for Child's Month is. It says, our children, today's creation, tomorrow's masterpiece. Today's creation, tomorrow's masterpiece. And isn't that just, just amazing to think about? That our children are masterpieces made by God. And they're beautiful. They're, they're wonderful. They're incredible. You know, I think about the first time I saw my children after they were born. And just, they were so beautiful. And they just, they changed my life, my life forever. My wife and I, our, our lives have just been absolutely transformed by these two little kids who we had the privilege of raising and watching them grow and, and, and become a young woman and a young man. It's just amazing to be able to see God's work on display in the lives of our kids. And I know many of you as parents feel the same way. You see, our children aren't just today's creation. They are masterpieces. And yes, while the theme is tomorrow's masterpiece, I'm going to even go a step further and say that they are today's masterpiece as well. And so I want to talk about several things regarding our children today. And the first thing that I want to talk to you about is this, is, that, is to remind us that our children are precious. Our children are precious. And the Bible reminds us of this fact that our children are precious. Your children are precious to God. I want to show you a few scriptures here about what the Bible says about our children. First one is Psalms 127. 
In, in the 127th Psalm, it says, children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. Our children are a reward from God. They're a gift from God. They're, 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 so they're to be cherished. They're, they're precious. Let's read another one. Psalm 139, verse 13 and 14. And it says, For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. You know, and, and no offense to our ladies, but a lot of times verse 14 gets appropriated to, to just women. But if you're a man, if you're a boy uh, listening to this, I want to tell you, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. If you're a girl listening to this, a woman listening to this, I want you to know you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You as a human being, regardless of your age or whether you are male or female, it doesn't matter. You are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image and likeness of God. So when God gives us children, when he gives us children, it, we have to understand that they are precious. See, see, God knew us. He knew our inward parts because he formed them. This, this word, in, this phrase, inward parts, it's talking about who I am on the inside. You know, there are people who know me and then there are people who know me. There's people who, who know who I am. They, they know things about me. They know I'm a pastor. They know I preach this sermon. They, they maybe heard stories about my life and things that I've done or haven't done. And then there's other people who who know me, they know Andrew, they, they know the inner parts of me, they, they know what makes me tick, they know the things that I like and the things that I don't like, they, they know things about me. God says, I, I formed those, I made those, I made those parts and I, and I know what they are. And, and he says, you knitted me together in my mother's womb. He said, so God knew you from before you were even formed in your mother's womb. See. If we look at scripture, both in this scripture and when we even read like Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, where it tells us that, that before we were even knitted together in our mother's womb, that God had a plan and a purpose for our lives. God has a plan and a purpose for your life, regardless what, of what age you are. A lot of times we think that, that, that we need to wait till our kids are older before God can use them. Can I tell you, I don't care if your child was just born or if your child is 50 years old, God can use our children. God can use our children regardless of their age. You know, our, our children are just so sweet and precious. I, I love them. And like every other parent, you know, it's easy to say that on a public setting. I'm, I'm going to also be real with you. My children can be real frustrating at times. <laughs> but they're sweet and they're precious and I, and I cherish them more. I, even though, yes, all of our kids frustrate us at times. We, we love them and they're more sweet and precious than they are frustrating. You know, just, just in this past week, my kids, both of my kids, I've had just these sweet, precious moments with them. And uh, my son was sitting next to me this week and, uh, and he leaned over and he kissed me. And then he said, I love you, daddy. And then right after he did that, he turned around and he hit me with one of his toys. <laughs> my daughter, similar, similar moments where she comes in and she hugs me and she gives me a kiss and, and she tells me, she says, Daddy, I love you. And, and then, you know, the, all of a sudden, a, a few minutes later, it's a temper tantrum or it's something in there. But even though those things happen, we've got to learn to cherish the fact that our children are precious and cherish those precious moments with our kids. And so I want to kind of give you the crux of, of the message today of where all of this has come from and, and even where we're going to continue to go next. When we read in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, look at what scripture says. It says, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. So, so I want you to understand this. God plans some good things for your life before you were even born. And from the time you were a child, God had good plans for your life. Now, there's, there's a lot of, lots of incredible things in there. And, and to be honest, I could go a lot of different directions with this. Uh, but, but what I want you to see there today is this. We are God's masterpiece. 
We are God's masterpiece. And that is one of the things that, that this most incredible things that we, we read in Scripture. Is that when we get saved, when we, when we come to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, one of the things that happens, the Bible tells us, is that we become sons and daughters of adoption. Which means God adopts us into his family and it's at that point that we become children of God. You know, you, you hear a lot of times people say, well, we're all God's children. Scripturally, that's not biblical. That, that, that's not scriptural. That's not biblical. What it actually is, is that when we get saved, we become adopted into the family of God. And it's then that we become his sons and daughters. And so before that, what I would say is that we're all God's creation. But it's when we get saved that we become adopted into the family of God. And it's at that point that we then say, I'm a son, I'm a daughter of God. And what Paul is saying here when he's writing to the church in Ephesus, and, and he's saying this, is he's saying we are God's masterpiece. He's talking about those who are saved. Now, do I still think that we are masterpieces even if we're not saved? Absolutely, because you're still made in the image and likeness of God. But Paul says there's a new level to that masterpiece. There's a new level to that work of art that God is doing. And that new level is that he has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. So when you get saved, this isn't something that you boast about and say, well, I'm better than you. No, no, no. This isn't an I'm better than you situation. This is I'm, I'm being made new. And what it is, is, you know, I like to say it this way, is that we're all made in God's image and likeness. But when sin came into the world, it was like a car crash. A BMW is still a BMW, even if you write it off. You may look at it differently. The value of it may be, may be different. The, there may, it may not function properly. It may not work properly. But it's still a BMW. The same thing happened when sin came into the world. We're still made in God's image and likeness. We're still masterpieces because of that. But sin was, was like a car crash for us. And what Jesus is doing here is this word he created us anew is actually what it's saying is he's restoring us to the way that we should be. And so it would be like finding an artwork, one of, uh, you know, a, a great artist's lost artwork from many, many years ago, but it was partly damaged or destroyed. And so what someone does, what a great person would come along and do, is they would take this, even though it's been damaged, and what would they do? They would restore it to proper order and restore the, the image, the painting, back to its original or at least as close to it as they could get. And what this is saying here is Jesus is making us new and restoring us to the way that we should be and the way God intended for us to be. And so we call this regeneration. There's, there's a regeneration that happens, a renewing that takes place and transforms our lives and this is important for us to understand because it's in this that we understand that we are sons and daughters of God and so as parents now when we relate this to our kids and we look at our kids and we go man look how wonderful and great and beautiful our kids are and that's absolutely true there is a greater work that, that, that God wants to do in the life of your children through Jesus Christ he wants to make them, create them anew in him. See, I want you to understand that we, we're all a work in progress. I'm a work in progress and you're a work in progress. Every single person on this planet is a work in progress and so are our children. Their minds are like sponges. They, they soak everything up. And so, you know, it, it's important that, that we teach our kids that Jesus wants to, to refresh them. He wants to renew them. And this isn't like, like they're going to become unrecognizable. No, that's not what it is. What it is, is he wants to make them really who they, they were created to be. Who God designed them to be. Because he knows, he formed their inner parts. And by doing that, he has been able 
to to see to know who they really are better than even you as a parent the bible tells us that we should train up a child in the way that they should go so that when they are old they would not depart from it and we use that in a very general sense which is nice that, that you know we want to teach our kids all that they need to know in life but the premise of that scripture is that we should teach our children the ways of god so that when they are old they would not depart from god's ways and see we need the help of Jesus. We need the help of the Holy Spirit to live that life, to be that person, to be those people. And you see, because our children are, are works in progress just like we are, and because their minds just soak up everything that, that is taught to them, it's sometimes easy to forget that our children are growing and they're learning constantly. They're growing and they're learning every single day and you know what as our children age we have to care for them accordingly because if we if we don't do that if we don't try to care for our children accordingly as they continue to mature and grow it, it will create some challenges for us and so when we Think of it in terms of this. When, when, we, when we get something new, right? We, we get a new car, we get a new phone, we get a new whatever it is. It, it has a shine to it. It's almost like you can't keep your eyes off of it. You just can't stop looking at it. It just looks beautiful and pretty and wonderful, right? And then all of a sudden, a couple of months go by and that shine is now gone. And it's not as shiny as it used to be. And it's only been a couple of months. But for some reason now, it, it's, it's just not what it is once was and it fades and we can lose the value on that you know for for many people when we when our children were small and they were young and it, they were just the shiny new thing and we just couldn't keep our eyes off them but as they got older as they began to mature then then all of a sudden we we don't necessarily see our children with the same value that we once saw them with and it's important that we don't lose sight of the fact our children are precious they're precious, regardless of whether they frustrate us or not. Our children are precious, beautiful gifts from God. And we should always remember that. You know, when we, when we read this here, it talks about we're God's masterpiece. And this word masterpiece here is interesting. It's the Greek, the, the word that's used here is the Greek word poema. And uh, this, this Greek word poema here, uh, what it actually uh, means is it, it actually is the English word that we have poem and so it's it's actually quite a powerful word that that we use and so when it says we're God's masterpiece or some translation says workmanship the Greek word that's there is the Greek word poema and this masterpiece let me just explain and, and read for you here what what it means by masterpiece a masterpiece is is a creation that has been given much praise, especially one that is considered the greatest work of a person's career or to a work of outstanding creativity, skill, and passion. So when we when we think about that, right, and in the context of what it's saying here, it's saying that God sees us as people of value. God sees us as his greatest work. It's one of the reasons why when God sent Jesus to die, Jesus died for the sins of humanity he didn't die for the for all he he died to, that all creation might be restored yes but it was your sin and my sin that he took upon him on the cross because we are his poem his masterpiece god wants to perfect us just like we want to raise our kids to be to be perfect little angels right God wants to perfect you and I. But the way that he does that is through Jesus Christ. And the way he's going to do that in your kids is through Jesus Christ. And so may we honestly just, and I'm not saying, and please don't take it this way, but I want to, I want to expressly say this just in case so there's no misunderstanding. I'm not saying that our kids have no value. I'm saying our kids have much value. They, they're so precious, in fact that one of the greatest things that we could ever do is surrender our children to God 
and let him transform their lives because they are that important. They are that important. And if we lose sight of the preciousness and the precious value of our children, then we run the risk of losing one of the most precious gifts that God has given to us. Children are not an afterthought for God. Children are actually very much at the forefront of God's mind. And they shouldn't be an afterthought for us either as a, as a community, as a church, as a government, as, as anything. Just, just think of any, any area or aspect of, of, of our social lives, of what it means to be alive, of what it means to be people, as, as what it means to be a family. Children should not be an afterthought. They're too precious and valuable to be an afterthought. See, they're a part of God's master artwork. They are God's masterpieces as well. And so, if you do this with me today, if you're listening to this, when you, uh, in whatever format you're watching this on, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or our church online platform or online campus, would you, would you comment this in the comment section? Say, I am God's masterpiece. I am God's masterpiece. I just think it's important that, that we say that. Would you even say it out loud? I am God's masterpiece. And it's not so we can walk around boastful and be like, well, I'm God's masterpiece. No, no, I don't mean it like that. I just think it's important that we understand that we are valuable to God. God loves us so much, in fact, that the, the, one of the most famous scriptures, the most famous scripture, John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God so loved you and me that he gave his only son. That's important. So the second thing I'd like to point out is that God loves little children. This is important for us to understand, and, 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 and this is such a core and central theme even in the New Testament about God's love for not just children in general, but God's love for us and for our kids. This is, this is great. You know, the irony of life is this, is that we spend so much time trying to get our children to act like adults, yet God spends a lot of time trying to get us to act like children. I want to show you this. If we, uh, if we read Mark chapter 10, when we read Mark chapter 10, 13 down to verse 16, I want to see what it says. It says, one day some parents brought their children to Jesus so that he could touch and bless them. But the disciples scolded the parents for bothering him. When Jesus saw what was happening, he was angry with his disciples and he said to them, let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. Now, this is incredible. He says, to tell you the truth, anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. Then he took the children in his arms and placed his hands on their heads and he blessed them. This is just a beautiful picture here of the love of God for children. I mean, just, just look at how, you know, we, we, we used to sing the song in, in, in Sunday school and as kids growing up. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Now, you don't have to clap for me. That's okay. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. But, but just, just think about that for a second. How God loves our children. You know, the best investment that you and I can make is in our kids, is in children. In the children, not just that, that are biologically ours, but the children in our community and in our society. It's one of the reasons why, as a church, we have taken it upon ourselves to, to pour resources and time and effort into our kids because our kids are important. Our kids are important. Jesus tells us this. You know, it's easy for us to be like the disciples and be frustrated with our kids. It's easy for us to be like the disciples and, and wanna, wanna shove the kids in another room, but, but Jesus wants to bless our children and he's standing there with open arms saying, bring the children to me. Bring the children to me. Jesus loves the children. You see, 
the question that then is spurred up in my mind is is then how do we how do we help our children reach their full potential how do we get our children to become all that god wants them to be how do we help our children to succeed in life i mean isn't this sort of what it's all about if if our children are today's creation and tomorrow's uh, they're, they're today's creation but they're also tomorrow's masterpiece then, then how do we get that to, to 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 happen how do we we help our children to succeed in such a way that 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 the the value that they have is able to be seen and able to be shown so let's look at this really quickly i want to show you First of all, a few things. And the, one of the first ways that we can get our children to reach their full potential, to, to show that master class, to, to show the masterpieces that they are, is first of all by loving them. Never underestimate those three simple words, I love you. They are powerful. And not just saying the, those, those words, but, but doing those words. Love is a verb. It's an action. It's something that we do. It's not just something we say. And so it's important that we, we, get, we, we, we grasp this concept that we should love our children. So for, for us, loving them is important. Second of all, is that we need to bless them. Bless them. Now, here's the incredible thing about blessing our children. A lot of us think that when I say bless them, our minds go to buy them more toys, buy them more stuff, give them more things. I'm not talking about spoiling them. I'm talking about blessing them. And it's important that we understand how to bless our kids. So we bless our kids by sharing with them how much they mean to us. We bless our kids by, by sharing with them how we see them. So we say things to them like, I think you're strong. I think you're handsome. I think you're beautiful. I think you're, you're smart. I think you're brave. I think you're powerful. I think you're courageous. Giving them good words. And then praying with them I think it's important that we pray with our kids to, to pray pray about things that that they they're struggling with pray together about things that we're struggling with you know one of the most incredible things to me has been that you know I pray with my kids all the time they don't feel well or something's going on or whatever I pray for them I pray with them but one of the greatest blessings that I've had is when my children have prayed for me and I've even seen miracles happen. I mean, I remember one time I wasn't feeling well and my daughter prayed for me. And, and I felt better instantly. I mean, I'm not just exaggerating. I'm being serious. So, so bless our, our kids. Uh, third of all, we need to inspire them. It's so important that we learn to inspire our children by speaking into their lives. Now, this is similar to blessing them, but it's, but it's also different from that. Give them pep talks. Inspire them to be great. Inspire them to do more. Inspire them to, 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 to let their light shine. See, that's important for us to do. And, by, and one of the ways we can inspire our kids is by setting achievable goals for them that will boost their confidence and boost their self-esteem. Fourth, we need, to, we need to teach them. Now, this is important. You know, we need to teach our kids more than just the life lessons that we've learned. Although it is important that you share your life lessons with your children. But, but we need to teach them by letting them also experience failure. Some of you parents, your, your antennas just went up and say, what? No, I don't know. But, but listen to me for a second. One of the ways that we learn greatest is from our failures. As a parent, one of the ways that you learn is from failure. Now, that doesn't mean that, I say, that I'm saying we should set our children up to fail. No. But when they experience failure and we help them in recovering from failures, it sets them up for greater success in the future. My parents did that with me. And, 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 and I know many other parents have, have done the same thing. You know, it's actually interesting that, that a group of us men got together and we were, were talking about life and, and what we could do to be better fathers. And many of the fathers in, in our group and even many of the mothers who I've spoken to have said, you know, I, I, I coddled my children too much and they never experienced failure and they were not prepared for life when it happened. 
Because in their mind, life was just always going to be good. Life was just always going to be success. And when they experienced failure and loss, it nearly broke some of them because they were sheltered from feeling the failure. But when they experience failure, they value success. See, we learn from our failures more than we learn from our successes. Success makes us boastful, but failure humbles us. And so we need to learn to expose our kids to different types of experiences, different types of hobbies, activities, things to do. We need to teach them even how to make decisions. You know, one of the things that's inc incredible to me about parenting that many parents need to learn to do is, is actually teach their kids how to manage money. See, for a lot of us, we just give our kids money and then, or, or like they get a summer job and then we just make them blow it on candy or whatever it is they want to buy video games or whatever it is. But instead, we should teach our kids and, and give them an allowance to say every month. It doesn't have to be much, $5 or whatever, whatever it is you can spare. And then teach them to manage that, to set financial goals even. So by doing this, we set our kids up and then, then share from our experiences in life. You know, one of the things that, that, that I think is important that we, we need to learn to do is we need to learn to share the, the experiences that we have had in life with our kids. Uh, and, and I know that some of us have come from some really rough experiences that it would be very difficult to share with our kids, but maybe, maybe not share the whole thing, but share some things with them. Because when they hear about the, the, the things that we've had to come through to get to where we are, it inspires many of them and teaches them things. And then last but not least, spend time with them. Never underestimate the power that you have when you spend time with your kids. It's one of the most incredible things that we can do and it's so simple and easy. And that's one of the things that right now, I, I think given COVID-19 has been such a blessing is just the fact that we're able to spend time with our kids that we wouldn't normally be able to. Even though I know how frustrating it can be working from home and even though I understand the dynamics of, of, of family life right now in some ways can be difficult, I wanna challenge you to see it as a blessing. It's important that we do see it as a blessing. And so, it, this is this is absolutely incredible. So so doing these things are so important and they're so valuable and it helps us to love our kids and, and help set them up to reach their full potential. See, I want to challenge you with something. I want to challenge you to change the way you think about children and change and to be honest with you, I think this is something we need to do across the board. I think we need to change the way we, we, we think about children when it comes to church. I think we need to change the way we think about children when it comes to, to, to our government, to our society, to our school systems even. We, we need to think about the way that we interact and deal with our children because fundamentally we want to say that our children are the future, but then we pay very little attention to what they can offer us now. You see, we, we want to set this world up for them tomorrow but they're here today and this is their world too and no maybe they can't vote and no maybe they, they, they can't make certain decisions for their life and, and those things are, are absolutely true I mean you know who, who wants a, a four-year-old driving a car you know my point is not that my point is is that we need to recognize that children aren't just the future they're also the present and when we help them today, when we, when we, we guide them today, when we, when we love them today, when we do these things for them today, it sets them up for tomorrow, for a better tomorrow, and it gives them an input in the life that they are living today. You know, I can think back to things that happened when I was a child in, our, in, our, in the world that we're living in today. I can think back to things that happened back then that, that when I, I look at it, I go, that's not the world I wanted to live in. And that's not the world I want to live in. You see, because when I look back at some of those things and I go, today, I, I wish that had been different then. So your children should also have input because this is their world as well. They are our future, but we are 
investing in them now and the question is what are we investing in them now see we want to make sure that the masterpiece continues to thrive continues to get more beautiful and wonderful with time you see the universe that we live in is unique and it's it's diverse and it's incredible and, and as people we are spirit soul and body and God made everything physical, He made everything spiritual. And so there's there's the physical and there's the spiritual aspects to, to everything. And we have to learn to cultivate both of these things in our kids. To not just make them good footballers or, or not just to make them good musicians or, or good politicians in the future or good whatever, whatever, whatever. But that we also learn to raise them up in Christ. That as Ephesians 2 talks about, that we that they may be new creations in Him, masterpieces for the glory in the name of God, regardless of whatever it is they want to do. See, put it, let me put it to you like this. If you've ever seen a tapestry before, it's this beautiful, just absolutely beautiful work of art. And what they do is they, they, they take thread and they, they expertly weave thread and create this beautiful tapestry and on one side it's absolutely beautiful and you've got this image of whatever this beautiful thing is but on the other side of the tapestry it's an absolute mess I mean it's just chaos but here's the thing is that if you look on the other side every thread is put exactly where it needs to be every thread is placed strategically and specifically Every thread was put there for the greater purpose of achieving the goal of a beautiful masterpiece. And you see, for your life, for my life, and for the life of our children, there are going to be some messy things that happen, but it's all a part of God's plan for our lives. Not a piece out of place. Because God is weaving together our lives to make us into a beautiful tapestry for the glory of His name. You are so valuable to God that God gave His life as an offering for you because He loves you. And, and, and you may think your life, your childhood, your family, your children are, are messy. Maybe that's how you think. Maybe that's, maybe that's how you feel today. But can I tell you, maybe you're looking at it from the wrong side. Maybe you need to see it from God's side. From God's perspective. Because if you could see what God sees, you'd see a beautiful masterpiece being woven together. And when you look at your children today, I pray that's exactly what you see. A beautiful masterpiece in the hands of a master crafter transforming their lives to make it something absolutely beautiful can we pray god i thank you that today we have heard this message and lord we 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 know that you are good and we love you and we're so thankful father god for all that you have done for us for all you continue to do in us and through us god and i thank you that today you have called us your own that today you have, have loved us with an everlasting love. So much so that, Father, you died for us. And in dying for us, you allowed us to become sons and daughters of God. So, Lord, today I, I just ask, would you today, God, take us in your mighty hand? Lord, whatever is whatever's going on, I just, I just pray right now that you would have your way in us and through us. Whatever we're feeling, whatever's happening. Lord, I thank you for our children. And I thank you for their lives. And I thank you, Lord, that they, they, they too are experiencing things. But Lord, I thank you that you hold us, whether we're adult or child, in your hand. In your mighty hand. So God, today I thank you that you are good and that you are a father to us. And we can turn to you. Scripture tells us over and over again that you are a father to the fatherless, which means that, Lord, we, we can be your children. We can be your children. And I thank you for every child today. 
and I bless them in Jesus' name. Listen, I know that this is Child Month and, and you know, we've been talking about kids, but, but can I ask you something? Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior today? Do you know that he died for your sins, to set you free, to give you life, so that you could be known as a child of God? That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that we become sons and daughters of adoption through the Spirit of God when we get to know Jesus, when, when he becomes Lord and Savior of our lives. And if, the, and if you are not a child of God today, if you want to be, if you want to know Jesus, if you want to walk with Jesus, then I want to give you that opportunity today. And I want to pray with you right now. And if that's you, would you would you just pray with me? I, I, however old you might be, I don't care whether you're a small child listening to this or, or you are in your 80s, 90s, or even 100. Let's, let's, let's get them all. I don't care if you're 200. Jesus wants you to be a part of his family today. He wants you to be a child of God, to be adopted into the family of God. And if that's you, would you pray this prayer with me? Would you, would you just say, God, I surrender my life to you right now. And I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. I believe and I declare that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he died and he rose again on the third day. Would you save me and set me free today and help me to live my life for you from this day forward? In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, God bless you and I, I, I love you and I'm just so thankful for you. And if you prayed that prayer today, would you let us know by emailing us at agape at cndw.ky or leaving a comment in the comment section or you can call us at 949-2539 and let us know and we'd be happy to to just talk with you about this decision that you've made today in christ but i pray that you would enjoy child month i pray that you would sense and feel the power of the holy spirit and i pray today that you would follow jesus with all your heart amen